Hello everyone and welcome to another Adobe Live from the Sofa. Uh, and just a reminder that these sessions are every day from 12 p.m. so be sure to tune in all week. Uh, and this is the second of our Fresco series. So two weeks ago we had Rachel Presky and Emmy Lupin doing a fabulous poster design uh, tutorial. And today, how is everyone? Please let me know in the chat. If you're over on YouTube and you want to join the chat, be sure to switch to Behance, where I'll be monitoring all the comments there. Uh, so I'm Hazel, I'm a freelance illustrator, and I work uh, with brands and charities on their marketing. And I'm joined with the wonderful Tamika Grooms, uh, who is a children's book illustrator uh, and artist. So Tamika, would you like to introduce yourself to everyone here, here today? Thank you, Hazel. Hey, everybody out there in the world. <laughs> My name is Tamika <laughs> Grooms. <laughs> I'm an illustrator, I'm an artist, and um, I am so happy to be here with you today. Um, a part of what I do with my work is focus on children's books and children's liter literature and illustration. And so I'll be tinkering around with drawing some children today. So um, um, that's what I do. That's amazing. Uh, so where is everyone tuning in from today? Let's see, I can't see the comments yet. Um, says, all right, I'm just gonna, just gonna refresh and see if I can see all the comments to see where everyone is joining in from. All right, and so today's session is Adobe Street Party and with a focus on injecting character into our characters and not resorting to stereotypes and preconceived ideas of people. So if that's your thing, you're in for the right session. And ah, I've finally got uh, the comments. So we've got West Sussex, UK, Sunny Surrey, lovely. And Munich, hi Emma, nice to see you. Uh, and I'm also going to try and do something a little bit, uh, a little bit ambitious. But as we're creatives, this is the perfect time to be ambitious and not be afraid of failing. So what I want to invite everyone to do is to draw a character with us and then submit it um, at the end of the stream or at the end of the day. And I will be collating everyone's characters, hopefully, into this Adobe Street Party, which is quite exciting. So I've just got the submission details here. Um, the page is 350 millimeters by 420 millimeters. Uh, and then you'd submit the PNG without a background to my email address, hazelmead at yahoo.co.uk. And then I'll hopefully collate uh, everyone's characters into this image. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and don't worry, don't worry, Oliver, if you can't draw, um, you can watch or you can submit a character if you like. Um, and yeah, and then we're just going to have a great chat mm -hmm. about um, character design and how we come up with uh, our characters. So I've done a little bit of prep for the character designs. I've added a few in already and I'm just going to be working on another one. So Tamika, what are you going to be working on today? Right, so my, I think I'm going to focus on drawing children today, but um, there's some diversity that I think I want to bring into the characters. And I, I think Amazing. we talked about maybe having some feedback from the audience and that might be great for me coming up with some of the characteristics of the character as well. Yes, definitely. So if anyone has any ideas for, I was thinking perhaps the names of the characters and um, yeah, what they're wearing, their clothes, what they're doing in the scene. Yeah, that would be fun actually. And then just a couple of questions here about the time scale. I'm thinking perhaps the end of today. Is that is that too soon? What does everyone think? And if you don't have Adobe Fresco, uh, Photoshop works as well. Um, just as long as it's a PNG submission and I'll work with it. We shall see. Exciting. So Hazel, what, yes, what, what um what brought what brought you to doing this this um this topic on diversity? Yes, yeah, so uh diversity in illustration is uh, a topic that's very close to my heart because I think I see often kind of tokenism uh, and tokenistic characters included uh, into, into the art world. 
And I think as illustrators, we have the power to reflect real people, if, if we so want to, um, into our drawings. And that's something I really try and do. Um, so I love observing people and including real people in my work. And I think that's how we reflect sort of true diversity. Um, yeah, rather than our preconceived ideas of what people look like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, how about you? What? How do you find your inspiration for your characters? Um, well, I'll, I'll, let me say it this way. So, um, so I, was, I always watch people. And this weekend I went into the um, Atlanta Farmers International Farmers Market. And it... Mm -hmm gave me a lot of inspiration because there's people from all over the world coming into that space, coming to buy their own, you know, their food, whatever it is from um, different countries. And a lot of times what I end up doing is asking people about the food that they're um, buying and what they're making. And it gives me an opportunity to talk to people. So, but little do they know, I'm also watching them and, you know, seeing yes. <laughs> all the differences because they're beautiful differences and it's so great to be around so many different people. So I use it for, for inspiration all the time. And that's just I one love of the that. Things. Yeah. I love that. Um, I think I saw that you said you watch people and you draw, draw people you see in real life. And that was something that really resonated with me as well. Uh, and I kind of take mental pictures. Um, so I do this thing where I just blink and then I've kind of stored their face into, into my brain. Um, I'm feeling it. <laughs> yeah, it's a good idea. Uh -huh. uh, I'm just having a look at the chat as well. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit of an experiment, um, but if you just send me any, any file, I'll try and work with it. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, so, so you're a bit of, um, uh, you have a photographic memory? No, I don't. I really wish I did. But uh, if there's a particularly interesting character, I really, really try my best to remember, oh, okay, their nose was like mm -hmm. that. Um, and for me, noses are one of the most interesting things to draw. Uh, I think I was in Malta and I remember thinking, oh, everyone's got a very similar nose. Like they, um, A lot of people had the Roman nose and mm -hmm. that was something... I hadn't seen that much uh, and I think I was about 12 and I remember um, yeah just really noticing that and that and from then on that was something especially noses I always try and include different noses um, because there's something so beautiful about adding difference into your work mm -hmm. um, but what is what's your favorite body part to draw and what's your least favorite and actually I'll open that out to the chat what's your least favorite and most favorite things to draw so um I think hands are probably well now feet but hands used to challenge me a lot mm. and so I forced myself to draw hands all the time and so now I kind of gravitate towards them um and they the, right now they're my favorite because they say so much about a person they can tell you their age, they can tell you what type of work that that person's done. And they're, you know, I talk with my hands, so it's like super expressive, but, um, you know, hands <laughs> say so much. Um, my least favorite, I would probably say, I had a drawing session, online drawing session this weekend. I hate drawing the back. <laughs> it's so hard. Ah, interesting. Um, Is that like a life, life drawing? Life drawing, yes. Session. Yes. Wow. Um, the back is so hard because there's so many um, nuances and muscles and, and very fine things that you have to understand about anatomy. And I'm still working mm -hmm. on that. So um, it's a work in That's process. Interesting. Yeah, I think I, I think feet and trainers, I just don't enjoy drawing them. So I um, rush them a lot. And I'm seeing here Stuart struggling with hands and feet. Yes. Hands, eyes, interesting. Hands. Yeah, actually with my eyes, I usually draw people with their eyes shut because um, mm -hmm. I find it a bit easier. Um, maybe that's cheating, but that's kind of become a bit of a trademark, not a trademark, a bit of a style indicator. I always draw them with their eyes shut. Yeah. Um, so that might help if you're struggling with, with eyes. <laughs> um, yeah, so the character I'm drawing, uh, I saw my friend yesterday, so I'm actually just going to draw her because 
I've got her mind, um, I've got her face on my mind. Um, so I'm just gonna draw her just lying in the grass, sitting in the grass, enjoying the sun. Um, but if anyone has any idea of like, what I should dress her in, I'm more than open to suggestions. The chat. So who who are you drawing, Tamika? Have you? Um. Hmm. I am still coming up with the concept. Um. I'm thinking it's going to be a little boy. Um, I love it. I'm thinking. I'm trying to figure out. I'm not sure yet. I'm kind of letting yeah. it go as I go. <laughs> oh, I love of, that. Yeah. Um. Right now, I'm, I'm messing around with these pixel brushes and trying to find the... Usually, I start with the soft one as I just do uh, rough sketches. Um, yeah, do you have a go-to kind of, go brush? Um, I almost always start with the soft chalk pastel and the pixel brushes to kind of um, figure out the movement of the body. And then I go mm -hmm. back over it with a different layer in a more detailed... Um, probably the dry brush, but I'm, I may choose one of the basic ones. But usually what mm. it ends up being is mimicking what I would use if I was doing traditional medium. So uh, using charcoals, um, pencils, and ah. pen. Oh, I love that. Oh, yeah, because you um, work with paint mm -hmm. and traditional media as well. I saw that you did a mural yeah. uh, recently. Yep. So how was that? That like different different scale working on a screen to working on a massive mural. I, actually, I really like working big. Um, um, it's actually a lot easier, I think. Um, so so I, I do enjoy working big. A lot of times people think that illustrators don't have the ability to do that, but uh, I don't think that's true. <laughs> I think people transfer, you know, the work to whatever it it, it needs to be. Um, but it yeah. is different though. It's different. Yeah. I can't remember the last time I've worked, um, worked on that scale actually. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Catherine says a sun hat and glasses solve everything. You know what? I might, I might just do that. I might give her a, a skirt. Yeah, let's do that. And a sun hat and glasses. Are you drawing a full scene? Um, no, so I thought, well, actually, I thought I'd only get through one character, um, mm -hmm. but we'll see, see how it goes. Okay. Um, and then, oh, I was thinking for this, for this little project, oh, umbrella with the, with the summer. Yes, maybe she'll be an, under an umbrella, eating some strawberries. Yes, okay, we're, we're get, getting more of a character here. Um, yeah, I was thinking I'm not going to set a colour scheme for the, for the little challenge. So mm. anyone can pick whichever colors they want and we're going to mesh them all together. Uh, so what projects is everyone working on at the moment? Any, any interesting things? Are you me or the, or the chat? <laughs> everyone, everyone. <laughs> Have you got oh. any things you're working on? Um, right now, I am working on my portfolio because I am trying oh. to find um, another publishing company to work with. Um, okay. Yeah, the, the last book that I published was with Peachtree Publishing um, last year. And uh, oh. so I'm looking for a new book project now. Um, I do have some book dummies that I'm working on. And um, mm -hmm. so I'm trying to get those prepared to submit as well. So um oh, so that is a lot of prep it'll be worth it yeah yeah um i got a lot of stories inside of me so um i gotta get them out gotta get them <gasps> amazing out. do you do you write them as well i i write a little bit um not as much as i draw but um but i, I do a little bit of writing that's not my strong suit so I'm, I'm trying to get better at it but i have a few stories that i've been working on for a couple years and had them um, reviewed and critiqued and uh, so I think they're almost ready so those are the ones that I'm trying to send out now ah oh, amazing oh I can't wait to do we get a sneak peek at um, what they're about or are you keeping them um 
one of them, and now that you mention it, I may work on something that's but for this related to that. But um, one of them is about um, a family reunion and uh, awesome. going back, going back home to visit your family as a little kid and what that feels like being in the South. And um, yeah, yeah, just the summertime wow. experience. Is it going to be set in Atlanta as well? Um, I think Southern Georgia, um, which is where a lot of my family is from. Atlanta uh, is on the north end of Georgia. Um, my family's from the south. It's hot. It's gnats. It's it's sweaty. It's a, it's a, it's hot. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure I cope with that. I'm not a, not a fan of the heat. Yeah, it's uh, weird. Oh wow! Everyone tuning in is working on some really. Um, buried projects, some furniture retouching, someone else working on their portfolio website. Yeah, I think a lot of people are uh, resetting at the moment and reevaluating everything. Some brochure design concept, concept stage at the moment. <gasps> Ooh, interesting. Oh, and a zine. <gasps> Amazing. Does anyone, um, does anyone do any zines? Any zines that they want to promote? And Siobhan says, yeah, not, not a fan of the heat. I love cozy weather. Mm -hmm. Yes. I love, um, I love pumpkin spice latte uh, season <laughs> in the autumn over here in the UK. Uh, and Angus is working on food labels for a local farm shop. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. All right, and yes, autumn is the best season. Everyone's agreeing. Do you have um? Do you have seasons uh, over over in America in Atlanta? Um, uh, in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> right now, it's uh, yes, pushing a hundred degrees. It's almost a hundred degrees here, and that that may last. Um, you know, in the upper nineties to hundreds to maybe for a couple months. But our seasons don't vary a whole lot. We we get all four seasons, but um, uh -huh. it's, it's warm most of the time. <laughs> we may have oh, one. Day, you know, we'll get one day of uh, one day of snow each year, so maybe. But oh, wow. uh, we don't get that much snow actually. But um, no, we do get a lot of cold, a lot of rain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you travel? Do you travel very much? Um, no, I went to China last year, um, mm -hmm. so that was the f my first time outside of Europe. Okay. Uh, and actually related to this, um, this is one place where I really noticed, I guess, diversity in faces. And this was something I was really um, aware of and aware of that my face was so different in so many ways. Mm -hmm. um, so I tried to mentally photograph lots of faces there so I could... Uh, put them into into my later illustrations mm -hmm. uh, and I think just going into a different culture that's where it reminds you of celebrating difference yeah one of the things um I work with SCBWI um it's the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators and one of the things that we talk about is representing diversity um accurately and making sure that mm. we're not falling into stereotypes of what we believe people look like um, or that we've seen in media. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and it's and it's hard because a lot of times if you haven't been exposed to certain cultures or, or um, communities, then you fall into what you know. Um, but we all, as, as illustrators, we kind of have a responsibility to you know, do the research and, and what we put out there, we're responsible for, you know? Definitely. Um, I think, I think we have um, the resources to do that as well. We've got Google. We've mm -hmm. got, um, I'm quite lucky to live in Bethnal Green, uh, which is so diverse and multicultural. Um, so many different 
ethnicities and races and so I'm very lucky to have all that on my doorstep I was thinking oh you know these places like where I grew up was a very all-white village um so I didn't have that um outside my front door you know um but yeah I think we definitely definitely have a responsibility uh, or, an, or an opportunity as well to make some change and reflect real people and yeah, just um, represent a bigger group of people mm-hmm. rather than resorting to resorting to what we think people look like, if that yeah. makes sense. And there's so uh, much beauty out there too in, in our differences. So mm. um, there's so much inspiration. So it's just a matter of us seeing it and, and reflecting it and, and showing it to other people too. Yeah, exactly that. Uh, and there was a great, I can't remember, I think it was uh, Molly Crabapple, mm-hmm. who is one of my all-time favorite illustrators. Uh, she said, you know, everyone knows what a strawberry looks like. Um, and you can draw a strawberry from your head and we'll probably all draw a very similar strawberry because we've been conditioned to <laughs> draw this strawberry and we'll just kind of draw the strawberry. We, we all know the kind of, yeah, draw a strawberry. It's like saying <laughs> it's like saying the the thing that you've always saying it the way you've always heard someone else say, um, instead of finding a different way to express it or express words in your own way. It's the same thing for art. You know? Exactly, exactly. Uh, so everyone would usually draw a strawberry, not really like this, but a little bit like that. And then when you look at actual strawberries, they all have such different shapes. Uh, and so when you're drawing from life, you would draw a completely different strawberry, probably, to the one that you know in your head. Um, well, well, I, that strawberry. <laughs> well, I just want to add to the strawberries. Um, so I started, my, <laughs> I started my Corona garden this year. Um, I, I've yeah. had a Corona garden in the past, but I decided since I have so much more free time, let's start a, a, a Corona garden. And um, so I grew two plants of strawberries. Um, the chipmunks ate one of them, and then I, I was able to get strawberries out of the second plant. But the strawberries yeah. looked crazy; they were deformed and they looked crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but I still ate them, though. <laughs> they tasted like strawberries. But yeah, they they're still strawberries. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they're still still valid, tasty mm. strawberries. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Okay, I think my character. I think I'm. I'm seeing who he is now. Um, Amazing. What do people think uh, he should be called? Tamika's character. Do you have a name in mind? Is is anything coming coming to you? He's naked right now, so he can be anything to anybody. <laughs> Gareth says strawberries are not the only fruit. Other fruits are available. <laughs> Okay, we've got we've got a couple of suggestions. We've got Jack and Chad so okay. far. And the fruit conversation is continuing. I grow golden raspberries, very different to the red ones. Oh, ah. I haven't had golden ones. I've never had a golden raspberry. This is interesting. This is not the conversation I thought I'd be having, but I'm I'm into it. <laughs> oh. Uh, learning about food today too. <laughs> okay, we're make, we're making progress with the character. We've got you've got some sunglasses. Do I want a hat? Okay, he said Jack or or they said Jack or Chad. Yeah, so we've got Jack or Chad. Okay. What are you, what are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling a Jack because he's a little jumpy. Jumping Jack, <gasps> jumping jacks. Jumping Jack. <laughs> oh, Angus says my food labels are blackberry jelly, gooseberry jelly, quince jelly, and raspberry jam. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think we should rename this theme. Um, <laughs> the fruit, the fruit session. 
you know I have not had breakfast yet. <gasps> oh no, <laughs> getting oh, hungry. Sandrine, <laughs> Sandrine grows wild strawberries. The yield was disappointing. Uh, and you have to fight in fierce duels with the gastropods. I'm not sure what they are, Sandrine, uh, but they taste nice. Okay, good. Um, and then I've actually got two characters that I haven't named yet. So I've got, um, so I've got Jasper. I was watching uh, Brian Kissinger. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce his last name. Um, and he was doing an Adobe Live, and he's one of the Disney animators. Or he was one of the Disney animators, and he was speaking about Jasper. And I was drawing this character while he was talking about Jasper. So that just kind of stuck this character who's um, drawing, uh, playing the double bass. I like it. Um, and then I've added a duck. So the reason for the duck is because um, I thought I want everyone to be lovely um, and happy and you know sunshine and rainbows coming to this uh, Adobe street party. And then I thought no wait we're talking about reality that's not real life not everyone's nice and happy all the time. So I thought I need a bit of a dick character and then I thought <laughs> yeah we're gonna have Dick the duck, who's a bit of a dick. Um, so that's that's, that's cute. That's, <laughs> cute. that's why he's here. <laughs> Got it. That makes sense. Balance, <laughs> balance, and <in> reality. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, and yeah, it's a sunny day. She's wearing sandals, sunglasses, no jacket. Yeah, she's happy. <laughs> and Catherine you... has cute. Oh, sorry. I'm so good. No, 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 oh, no. no. Sorry, I was uh, reading the fruit and veg conversation. Um, Catherine's got cucumber plants on gravel. Mm. Okay, and and Oliver has some wild strawberries in the garden too. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, but the birds, yeah, I feel that the birds discover the fruit before before I do. I, I, yeah, Rip, Richard the Duck. <laughs> Dick for short. Dick the Duck. <laughs> Sorry, Tamika, I, I interrupted you. Uh, I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, no. I went in five different directions. I'm thinking about wildlife and strawberry <laughs> and Dick the Duck. <laughs> <laughs> all at the same time. <laughs> That's all good, though. <laughs> <laughs> I digress. Um, I don't remember what I was going to say. Um, uh, it'll come back to me or it won't. It will come back. <laughs> <laughs> it will come back uh, when you're trying to get to sleep. Yes. To sleep at night. That's what will happen. Yes, yes. Oh, I know. Um, yes. I was thinking about the Corona garden I just mentioned. And um, mm. what, what are you doing to manage this, all of these 2020 changes? What am I doing or what is the community doing? Um, or... Yeah, uh, the community. Uh, oh, God. What, uh, what are we doing to manage the changes? Sort of on a personal level or do you mean the, the country? Um, on a personal level um, because a lot of us can't get outside as well we can get outside sometimes but um you know yeah. things are so different now with you know how we're around other people or not um yeah you, you know what um i i don't know whether other creatives feel this um but i was always a bit of an extrovert but since the since the lockdown and we're not it's slowly easing you're allowed to see people now here in mm -hmm. london um, but I've kind of, I feel a bit guilty for saying this, but I know I'm not the only one. Um, I've kind of enjoyed not having to go to all these social occasions and um, socialise as much. So I've just enjoyed a bit of time on my own where I'm sort of not forced to be going here, there and everywhere all around London, uh, meeting people. Um, and I've kind of enjoyed, yeah, Catherine says a bit hermity. I I've, I think I've turned into a hermit a little bit. 
<laughs> I'm just here with my iPad drawing uh, and it's and I go to the supermarket and I don't mind that life <laughs> actually. So I think I'm going to struggle when it does go back to normal suddenly having to get back into fast pace the fast paced yeah. life of it all. Um, how about you how are things? It's, over there? It's, been, it's been an adjustment because I was doing a lot of like what you were saying, you know, running to and fro and you know, doing all the things and um, being forced to sit down was actually a good thing. Um, mm. I needed to be still. And, um, you know, now I'm kind of ready to start moving around again, but I'm not in a hurry to get back to the way things were. So, there's balance. Yeah. You know? yeah, I think everyone's gone through this kind of reflective period of, okay, what don't I need? Mm -hmm. What do I need? What do I like about actually this new way of living? that I didn't do before. And you know what, I'm saving a lot of money on coffee because I used to get a coffee every day. And now I've just got I've just got these sachets and it's so much cheaper. <laughs> Look into your cup, that cup is so cute too. <laughs> Isn't it cute? Adorable. <laughs> just from Asda actually. So, um, you don't have, do you have Asda? Is that a UK not, thing? Nothing I know of, nothing that I know of. Ah, uh, yeah, it's just a, a supermarket uh, here in the UK. Um, so if anyone wants one, it's £2.50 from Asda, I, I recommend. Cutable, cutable. Mm. Uh, Siobhan is doing lots of video calls, yeah. Yeah. Lots of video calls, exercise throughout the day instead of in one buck. Ah, oh, time time for creativity and learning to dance. Oh my god, yes. What dance? What dancing are you doing, Siobhan? I'm, I'm doing salsa, actually. That's, um, yeah, that's been helping me get through lockdown just sort of having that salsa community online even though you don't think it would be online mm -hmm. it's nice discovering these kind of connections online that's uh something i didn't think would happen mm -hmm. um tamika do you have any uh do you have lots of zoom calls <laughs> 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 I am the Zoom queen over here. Are you joking? <laughs> <laughs> Some days I spend a whole day online oh, meeting. No. Yes. And I'm oh, like, no. there is not that much to talk about. <laughs> but there is. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful because I if we, if we didn't have the internet, number one, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> but yes, I, me neither. The, and, and the connection of having people and being able to talk face to face with people and um you know doing these calls i've been able to talk to people worldwide and i wouldn't have the opportunity without this so um there's just balance i go always go back to that balance thing um there's too much of it sometimes but i couldn't i, I won't say i couldn't exist without it but it, it's valuable it's valuable so it is it is we are very lucky i think I'm not sure uh, how my mental health would be if if we didn't have at least this sort of, sort of connection and phone calls and, and Zoom and all of this. And to, uh, Catherine says, Tamika, you're a breath of fresh air. I agree. Oh, so sweet. I agree. You bring so much joy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. Someone says, who's drawing Robert on a penny farthing? <laughs> I hope someone someone's drawing Robert on a penny farthing. That would be <laughs> that would be brilliant to see. Tamika, how are you going uh, with with Jack jumping it's, Jack? Uh, yeah, it's coming along. Um, it's coming along. I love it. It's got so much um, expression and movement in him yeah he's still trying to find his way but um yeah i think he's i think he's gonna be okay by the end of this <laughs> <laughs> yeah we've got we've got another 25 minutes so just yeah. over halfway through what is um so are other people um commenting on what they're what they're drawing to yeah, we'd love to know if anyone's if anyone's drawing along or if they're just having their lunch maybe or <laughs> what's everyone doing? 
Oh, Sean said, I would have gone freaking nuts without Adobe Live. Mm -hmm. I know this is a really nice arty community. And uh, when I do tune in, I always see the same names uh, coming back. I think I've seen Robert and Catherine and Stuart a few times. <laughs> okay, Stuart's listening, listening to us while working. And Sandrine's drawing along and not annoying people. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. What are you drawing, Sandrine? I'm just I'm distracting her now. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm struggling with this skirt actually. I don't think that's how skirts look. See, this is what happens when I don't draw from uh, from reference. Because uh -huh. uh, I always I always need reference. I am someone that does need to does need to look up. Yeah. Sandrine's drawing a young woman with a crazy hairstyle. Oh my god, I can't can't wait to say, see this. Oh no, and Gareth is constructing some electrical installation labels in Illustrator. Oh my god, oh, anyone that uses Illustrator, I'm quite envious of. I just don't get on with it. Um, which is why I love the vector aspect of Fresco because one thing that is annoying is when you do work with Photoshop and raster programs uh, and then clients want different sizes and then you sort of have to either redraw or send them over mm -hmm. something a bit pixelated. I do envy people that work with vectors. So I did actually use the vector brushes for the first time uh, on a commission and it went really well because they wanted to resize it for different things. Um, yeah. Have you worked with Illustrator before? I have. I have. Do you um, get on with it? Um, I do okay. Um, I like to finish. Well, now that I know about the, the vectors in Fresco, I've mm -hmm. been playing with that and then porting that over to Illustrator. And it's been so much fun. Um, <sighs> Yeah, I can just do the drawing in here and then do the tweaking in Illustrator a lot like I do with um, Fresco and Photoshop. Um, I finish mm -hmm. off in Photoshop, but um, sometimes I just want to get in and draw. So I'm I'm happy that Fresco has those features that I can can do that. Um, and then the cloud uh, sharing, too, that helps a lot as well. Yeah, you don't have to keep saving it and um, reopening things. Mm -hmm. in that way um gareth said i'd try fresco but i don't have an ipad <gasps> i know you know what i bought an ipad just for fresco it was an investment uh <laughs> but i think it was a worthwhile investment and my wacom was uh, starting to play up and it was out of warranty so uh yeah gareth has a wacom tablet as well so um i'm using a surface um uh, with windows 10 and, um, yeah, how do you find it? Um, it's it's working great for me, and, and Fresco's working perfectly. So um, I think Amazing. they may have it available now. So. Yeah, yeah. I think they have been... Oh, no, I don't want to say anything in case I'm... I'm <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, but you've clearly got, got it on, on your surface. And Sandrine's asks, what are your impressions on the surface, Tamika? I love it. I do. Um, because I do a lot of desktop things too. I need mm -hmm. a reference. I'm looking at this drawing. <laughs> I should have started from a reference. <laughs> but um, but uh, since it's uh, since I do a lot of desktop things um, and drawing, I'm able to keep everything all on one computer. Um, it can handle all my Adobe products as well as all the desktop stuff I'm doing. So um, so it works well for Perfect. me. Perfect. Yeah, that, that sounds amazing. You get what you need out of it and, and more, it sounds. Can we go back to the <laughs> reference <you>. conversation? <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> My little boy, I'm looking at his hips. They're all twisted. <laughs> His legs and arms are twisted in the wrong direction. This is what I get for not having my reference. But um, <laughs> we're going to make him work. He's looking back now instead of um, the way I had him. 
I'm working on him. I think he's great. I think he's great. Consider you haven't used reference for that. Yeah, this is off the dome. <laughs> that, um, that's impressive. To me, that's definitely impressive. It's going to work out, though. <laughs> is drawing pockets to put the hands in cheating? Sandrine says, no, not at all. I encourage pockets. <laughs> Pockets and sun hats and sunglasses and a massive coat so you don't see any of the figure either. <laughs> <laughs> All these hacks. Oops. All the tricks we have. <laughs> when time is short. Exactly. <laughs> what are your favorite brushes to use in, uh, in fresco? Um, you said the charcoal, the charcoal with, one. Well, you know what, though? When I first started, I was so impressed by the watercolor. And um, oh, because I, you know, I used to do use, use watercolor a lot. And I, when I use acrylic, I thin it out sometimes so that it's thin like um, watercolor. So to have mm -hmm. that digital platform and just the coolness of it moving around, I love. So um, I think that's probably my favorite one, but I don't use it very often. Um, yeah. But I think that's my favorite. Same. Like if I'm using, if I'm doing a really big detail piece, I won't bother with all the, all the textures that Fresco offers. But if, um, if it's just a portrait or something, then that's when I'd probably uh, go in with the oil paints yeah. and the watercolors and have a bit more time to, yeah, to experiment with all the features because yeah that is why I got a fresco as well but then kind of day-to-day -day commissions I don't don't use it to its potential as much as I probably should um, it'll, be, it'll be there waiting for you when you're ready yes <laughs> 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 definitely they're looking at me uh giving me the side eye like, you haven't used this in ages <laughs> right <laughs> Uh, all right, we're sort of drawing some feet here. Um, but also, uh, I don't often go in with all the detail, like the fingers and the and the toes uh, often. I don't know about you, Tamika. Do you try and get everything? or I try to force myself to avoid it because <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a never-ending thing when you start working with fingers and toes and all those details. Um, it depends yeah. on how, how much time and effort you want to put into it, um, I think. So Definitely. Um, and sometimes sometimes it's actually just not necessary. If there's so much going on in a piece, right. um, you sort of have to weigh up, is it going to add to the drawing? And, and sometimes it does take away. Um, you can overwork a hand um, or, or foot, like what I'm about to do with this shoe. Um, <laughs> um, you can overwork it and, you know, focus so much on the details and it ends up taking away from, from the, mm -hmm. uh, so I think so. I quite like working in a sketchy style as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, but right here I am going over the initial sketch. Um, but it's still fairly, fairly sketchy. I think it's not crisp. Yeah. Not me. And um, Kirsty, the details for submission. Okay, <laughs> let's get them back up. Um, so just a, a PNG with no background. And if you want to submit it to my ad address, hazelmead at yahoo.co.uk. Um, and then, yes, I'm going to have a go. And may maybe we'll get hundreds of submissions. Maybe we'll get zero submissions. I'm kind of preparing myself for both. <laughs> And we'll see how many, uh, yes, any character style at all, any character you want to bring to the party. And then I'm going to attempt to collate the characters into this image. And yeah, hopefully have a bit of a party. And if there's only a few of us, it'll be an intimate dinner party. <laughs> <laughs> OMG, who still works? Oh my God, I've had this uh, email address for years. Uh, I'm not. I'm not changing it. It still works. <laughs> it does me well. Oh, uh, but yeah, let me know if you have any more questions about that. Uh, and if you have any questions about 
uh, about anything about illustration or the industry or fresco we can we can try and answer we'll do our best and i'm sure there are some experts as well in the community that will be able to answer if we're not Okay, I think I'm just fiddling around now with, the, uh -huh. with this. I think I'm done. <laughs> Are you dropping uh -huh. colour in today? <gasps> What's the time? Oh my god, we've got 15 minutes. Yes, let's do some colour. All right. Are you? Do you think you'll get time or are you going to keep uh, it? I think, um, I think I'm going to try. Uh, we'll see. Usually I would have gone over this blue um, and retraced it because really this is just a sketch ah. of what my character's body is going to look like. Mm -hmm. but, but um do you use yeah. a blue outline um i use a blue to do the sketching underneath <clears throat> and then sometimes i'll come back and do another layer on top in a darker color or mm -hmm. i'll leave the blue in and do layers underneath and layers on top of the blue excuse me so it shows through so um it just fascinating depends. i love finding out how other artists work mm. in the process I love it. Uh, yeah, so I would do a rough sketch. Uh, and then sometimes I'd leave that if it's not too sketchy. And mm -hmm. if it is a bit too sketchy, I'd go over with another line, but still quite sketchy. And then I would colour underneath. And there was another illustrator, uh, Martina Martian, and we were doing a colouring session together. And it takes me so long to colour in. Mm -hmm. And she uh, has a way of just... Uh, using the fill tool and she'll just fill, 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 done. And it was hilarious because she'd done three pieces and I'd done, I'd probably colored a bookshelf for the whole of the piece. <laughs> Can I, the, the way that she draws, does she, mm -hmm. um, does she have very solid lines? Like yeah. very steady with her outline, yeah. Yeah, yeah. very solid lines. Um, I can't remember the technique she used. But either way, she was just able to fill very quickly. Uh, Gareth says, what's a priority? Chasing work and leads or self-initiated work for social media? Any tips for balancing or being a client and producer of your own work? <gasps> what a good question. That is a great question. Oh. <laughs> okay, chasing work and leads or self-initiated work for social media? What's your priority? I struggle. Do you wanna... I, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just chime in on that real quick. I struggle with that um, um, because I, I get clients and um, sometimes with the illustrations, it takes a little bit of time. Um, and so it, it's just, it's finding that balance again. How do I keep expressing myself as an individual artist and, and maintaining my own voice um, through mm -hmm. my work as opposed to bringing on other people's ideas and illustrating for them, you know, what their vision is. And because all of that influences how I produce work and what I create. Um, but there's, there's a balance. It's, it's challenging. Um, it is. <laughs> so I try to, I it try is. to be mindful about which projects I take now too. Yeah. See, I still struggle because when someone offers me money, I think as a freelancer, <laughs> It's really difficult to say no because you don't have that solid paycheck coming in every month. Um, so I struggle to say no sometimes um, and I take on too much, especially actually with the coronavirus. At the start of it, I really panicked and I thought, I'm not going to get any work. I need to take everything on. And I took a little bit too much on uh, <laughs> and then didn't really have a break for a good few months. So. I'm kind of learning that I don't have to take everything on. And as creatives, you know, we're creative. We'll find a way to make money. Um, yeah, so things will be okay. But I also, I know, uh, yeah, Sandrine can really relate with the panicking and taking on too much. <sighs> it's either uh, feast or famine, I find. Uh, so January, for me, is dead. Mm -hmm. It's completely dead. I don't get many projects then. And then as soon as um, the new tax year rolls around, 
Oh yeah. <laughs> That's Here it comes. Everyone. All the work comes. <laughs> so spring and spring and summer are busy, and then uh, winter is usually a little bit dry dry for me. So um, going back to Gareth's question, I find I do a lot more personal work uh, in January actually because I have a bit more time. But I do have so many pieces that I have in mind. But then deadlines are are calling. Do you have a set schedule and um, routine that helps to keep you on track as a freelancer? No. <laughs> I wish I did. So my, uh, I think I saw someone comment this here as well, but uh, my university lecturers said, treat it like a nine to five job. Um, you know, do, do your work nine to five and then switch off and in, enjoy the evening or do your own work then. Um, I tried that, but it doesn't really work for me. I get different creative bursts throughout the day. Uh, I don't know about you, but about two, two, three, four o'clock, I lose all motivation. Um, uh. and then I get more motivation after dinner. Uh, so yeah, I'm really, um, really productive first thing in the morning. So I think, I think it's about finding when you're most productive and when you need to take breaks. Uh, but do you have a routine that you stick to? Are you the nine to five type um, of person? Um, right now I have um, a day job. And so oh. I work, I work mm. my illustration and artwork in between that. Um, so if I have a project I'm working on, sometimes I'll get up early in the morning, maybe three, four o'clock in the morning and work on my art stuff before work because my mind is fresh. Um, did you, and, wait, did you say three or four in the morning? If I have a, if I have a deadline, oh. yes. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes that's when the house is quiet, the world is quiet okay. and my brain yeah. is fresh. Um, so I can do those extra things. Um, you know, outside of my day job during that time. Or I'll stay up late, but, you know, it just depends on, you know, how my energy levels are. Um, and then I try to sneak things in in the middle of the day, too, so. Because <laughs> I'm still an artist no matter what is going on. I'm still an artist. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. We just, we just get those random moments of inspiration. When is everyone else's... Um, most productive time. I'm always interested to see because some people don't, they say they don't really function until after, after lunch and that's when they'll start their day. But I am a morning person. <laughs> Tim says after midnight as a night owl. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee helps too. <laughs> to keep you to keep I, I don't, I, I'm not convinced. I think coffee makes me sleepy. Oh, wow. Because okay. <laughs> I always had a, I always had a coffee before I went to bed. So I think I associate it with going to bed. Gotcha. It always makes me a little bit sleepy. Gareth says, uh, afternoon, a break, then evening. Yeah, I've got a lot of evening, evening artists here and night owls. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Oh, we've got five minutes. Oh, no. Got distracted. Okay. Um, any last questions, anyone, about anything? Characters? Oh. Uh, does anyone want to name uh, maybe this little girl here who's flying away with the balloons? If anyone has any, any name ideas. Oh, okay. Oh, there's another big question. We've got, got them all today. Uh, how to deal with procrastination? What do you think? Uh, I think... I think have a clear space. I know everyone sort of says this, but when there's lots, um, lots of things everywhere, I 
get really distracted like oh there's a pen and then I start thinking about something to do with that pen and oh I need to write in my notebook and then my brain gets easily distracted so if I have a clear space um, there's less distractions so that's probably yeah my biggest tip and then having a to-do list keeps me on track and one time I tried uh, this isn't for everyone and it wasn't for me to be honest but I tried every hour I had a deadline mm. <laughs> so okay by this hour I need to have done this and this and this this hour is for lunch this hour is for this uh, and that kept me on track like oh no I've only got five minutes left I better do this um, but I don't think that's necessarily a great way of working so I don't think I'd recommend that <laughs> that's probably not very helpful oh no Stuart says break your day into one hour slots as well so for some people it does work but for me it just it felt too much pressure how about you Tamika um I will say my biggest thing for procrastination because I am a procrastinator is to just uh, start it start immediately <laughs> um I feel like I have a process that I have to go through and mm -hmm. a lot of times on a project there's that 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 doubt that comes in there's the i don't know what to do yet <laughs> so i have to give myself time to sometimes to start the project but if i that's a part of my starting so if i know that about myself i know i have to give myself enough time to manage myself um but i need to start on the ideas immediately <laughs> like sketching immediately so that i can get past that hurdle um, yes, that's my the, to start. The, yeah, the starting's the hardest bit. Once you're in it, you can you can flow. Uh, yeah. um, everyone's talking about time blocking. Yeah, time block, task batch, and day theme. <gasps> I really love that. Day theme. Have a, so so sort of have a theme for the day. So today is going to be this illustration, I guess. I think that's what she means. I like that. Oh time block and do a, a done list to see how I have spent my day. All right. See, I, I said before this stream, you know, I'm not going to do any more than one character. I'm going to get through one character. Um, so I'm a fa fairly slow artist. And I haven't even colored it in, but it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> I, I like those colors too. Thank you. I'm actually just going to show you my one of my favorite uh, brushes quickly, mm -hmm. which is called Farscape. I can't remember. I think it's in one of mm, one of Kyle's concept boxes, uh, but it's called Starscape, and it just adds this really nice kind of glittery, glittery texture. So I'm just going to make her top glittery, and then I think that will be me done. Ah, done for today. Yeah, glitter just, makes everything fabulous. <sighs> makes everything better. <laughs> Okay, let, let's take on one more question and then I will wrap wrap things up. Oh, and Kirsty has a focus app on my phone. And it's amazing. Oh, what's it called, Kirsty? That sounds incredible. I think we all need one of those. Yes. Uh, and then, okay, the last question. How do you focus on one idea when you have thousands that come and come in your head? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I want to do all the ideas and then it's too overwhelming and then I do none of the ideas. That's usually what happens. <laughs> um, I, you know, it helps okay. me to write them down. If I just go ahead and just write them all down and then pick from, you know, what I think is the most viable at that moment. Mm, very wise. I'm going to gonna have to do that. Yeah, I want to take on all of them at the same time. <laughs> and that's not, not productive. Uh, and Gareth agrees with you. Write everything down. Mm -hmm. Oh, we only have 30 seconds left. All right. So final things to wrap up. Just a reminder of the submission details. If anyone does have uh, a character that they want to submit to me by the end of today. Uh, yeah, just submit a PNG with no background to hazelmead at yahoo.co.uk. Uh, and also your Twitter handle. So uh, when I share it, um, I can tag you as well. Yeah, so it should should be exciting. I'm really excited to see what everyone's been drawing. I can't wait to see what they come up with. 
Yes, and uh, everyone just remember uh, that these Adobe Life on the Sofas are every day from 12. Um, so be sure to check tune in for the rest of today. Uh, rest of today, the rest of the week. <laughs> and oh, that's amazing. Siobhan's just sent um, a blog post all about productivity, your way to productivity. Amazing. Uh, and yes, thank you so much for joining everyone. Um, it's good to good to see you again. And Tamika, thank you so much for joining. I'm loving Jumping Jack. He's looking so good. <laughs> Are you going to send him over to me as well? I will. I will. I'm going to drop Thanks. some color in there. <laughs> uh, and yes, everyone tune in on Discord as well. Uh, yes, I can share the results on Discord. Um, I'm not sure how long it will take for me. I'll try and, um, if everyone submits today, I'll try and do it tomorrow and then share somehow with Adobe and on Twitter. Um, so thank you for a great stream, everyone. I hope you have a lovely day. Um, and thanks for joining. Thank you, Hazel. Thank you, everyone. See thank you.